What up, Blake? Oh. Hey, Josh, what's up, buddy? Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Can't see you. I know. This is weird. What's it say now? The Vena Agency. So I'll go over to start video, and this pops up. Nothing. Yeah. Um, maybe try selecting your camera, like next to the start video. There should be a little arrow. Yeah. Try changing the camera. So select camera. It only gives me one option. It says FaceTime HD camera built in because it's my MacBook, and uh, that's all I got there. Video settings. FaceTime camera. Huh. This is why I, I, I usually have a plug in with me and I plug in a webcam. Well, what I could do is go on my phone now. Happening. What up, Jay? What's going on? What's up, my man? My dog. Come on. How are, you? How are you, brother? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Josh, look at that look on you, man. You look good, dude. That's as grown and sexy. You look good. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Blake. Daquan. How you doing, buddy? Oh, doing great, man. Doing great. Thank you, Blake. What's yeah, happening? You guys what you need. Casey, the cat. What up, Jay? Jay, hey. My man. Yes. How you doing? Um, like talking to my fam, man. Can't wait to come up there and see you guys. Oh yeah. Right. Hey Quan, you been hitting the gym, man? You look <laughs> good, man. <laughs> I'm trying to get like you, man. <laughs> yeah, you look good. Good. <laughs> bad. What's happening? So I mean, I see a. A lot of faces with some at a lot of people that I know already. Uh, some new, I think I got 30 minutes. Guys, I mean, if, we, if you know me, you know, that's kind of hard for me. Uh, because I was around your boss for, for a long time, you know, so it's kind of hard, you know, to do the 30 minutes, but, I, but I'll try to get 30 minutes in. Um, I'll try to maybe leave 10 minutes also for any uh questions that you guys might have for me, also. Uh, so I'll try to do 20 minutes talking, 10 minutes Q&A. You guys got one of the goats in your office anyway, so I know he's giving you everything and, 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 and anything that you need. Uh, but first off, I'll just tell you guys my story just, just really, really quick, because uh, I know some of you are, are, are new. Gio, what's up? Uh, you know, some of you guys are new. So I started uh, American Income. Uh, I don't know if Tommy wanted, I don't need no introduction, man. We're, we're, we're all good. But what's up, my brother from another mother? I miss you, man. Miss you. No, I don't talk to you every day, man, but I but I do miss you, man. The love is still there. Miss you too, bro. Uh, and it will never go away, uh, no matter what, man. Well, I can't uh, wait to see you know, soon. Same, same, man. I'm excited for it. I'm excited. We've been working hard, as, as I know you guys are also. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just tell you guys a little bit about my story really quick. Uh, you know, I started American Income in March of 2008. Uh, I'm an old man. You know, now I started when I was a kid, 25 years old. Uh, what TV, uh, my brother, 
And, uh, you know, we, we from, from when I started, um, I opened up a few offices. You know, I started in March, opened up an office in January. So two months later into the deal, opened up an office uh, two and a half hours away from my home. I uh, was there for about three to four weeks, uh, then went to Erie uh, with Casey, opened up Erie. Uh, you know, I'd only been in the deal for about four months, running my own office. Uh, within a six-month time frame, I was an MGA uh, in the business, uh, was, was, was starting to make a little bit of waves in international uh, waters as well in the Spotlight Magazine. Then I moved to West Virginia, uh, became an RJ within a year now in the business, lived there out of a hotel for six months. Uh, you know, traveling back and forth. Monday, I would leave Pittsburgh, live in a hotel uh, for a full week, then travel back on Friday. I did that for six months. Um, you know, at that time, I did that for six months. We closed the office adversely. You know, so imagine doing that away from your girlfriend, away from your parents, brand new. Uh, that office was doing probably, you know, some weeks 20,000, but probably about 10 to 15 a week, uh, but just bad location. And we closed the office down after all that work. Uh, then I got back to Pittsburgh and then we opened up Maryland, had to go down to Maryland uh, for a few years. Um, at that time, I became the number five MGA on stage um, in 2011, uh, three years into the business. And, um, you know, then the fourth year into the business became the number three MGA, had a baby. Um, and now fast forward, you know, 12 years into the game, uh, you know, one of the presidents of, of areas agencies where Tommy left. Uh, has had a lot of success doing over, you know, five million in production. We should probably do about six million this 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 year, uh, hopefully seven, but but definitely six. Uh, renewals are are, are unbelievable. Uh, blessed to be able to receive seventeen thousand a month um, in renewals um, every single month uh, before I wake up out of the bed, which I know Mr. Vina tells you a lot about residual income. Um, and, and and now I'm just you know blessed to be on blessed this year probably and I hate talking about myself uh, but this year should clear over a million dollars um, hopefully um, you know um, in in income uh, which which I've never done before um, I'm only 37 not 40 not 50 and uh, you know I'm just a testament that 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 will show you my motto is CPR you know so uh, I always preach consistency to my people. Um, you got to be consistent, you know, and not just in, you know, your work, but consistent in your thoughts, consistent in your words, consistent in your behavior, like your whole life, you got to be consistent with the things you eat, with the things you say, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you do everything is the way you do everything. So you got to be consistent. The P is patience. You know, people want things too fast. Uh, our parents, you know, everybody looks young on this screen. Our parents you know, my dad worked for 33 years of his life, you know, and some of our, some of these young kids come in, they want everything in three years. You know, you can get it in three years. Don't get me wrong. Me and Mr. Vina did, but you go out, you go work. You know what I mean? It's not going to be a 60 to 80 hour work week, just one year, not just two years. It's going to be an 80 hour work week until you get to where you want to be. Like we put finish lines on things too much and we're not patient. And we get mad at the people when it's us. So as a leader, you know, you got to understand, you got to be patient with yourself, patient with the business, but be impatient with the results too. You know, it's almost like a double-edged sword. You got to be patient, but impatient. You got to want things, but you also got to be patient for them. So the P stands for patience. And then the R, which I live by, you know, is resiliency. Nothing, nothing, nothing can stop you from where you want to be. You know, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to get to 100,000 a week. I was going to talk to you about how to get to 50, but your leader thinks so big, you know, and he's like, boom, let's get to 100. You know, how can you get to 100,000 a week? You get there by everybody working collectively, but also working towards a plan. You know, that's one thing that we did very well within areas agencies. We were all individuals, but we all worked as a family as well. You know, we would talk smack, we would talk shit, excuse my language, but at the end of the day, we weren't bad people. Like, I wanted Tommy to have a great family and a great life, but I also wanted one too, but we could do it together. Want Matty D to have that. So understand, Vince, uh, uh, Gio, Todd, all these people, you guys got to want the best for each other, but you also 
you got to understand that you're going to compete to complete. You know, there's no way that you can get to 100,000 by Casey doing it alone. No way you can get to 100,000 by Josh doing it alone. So you got to be resilient. It doesn't, every day is not going to be the best day for you. There's, there's 365 of these suckers. You know what I mean? There's 52 weeks. Every week's not going to be your best week. But why can't 45 of them be your best week? Why can't 40 of them? You got to demand excellence. So the first thing that I think when you look at getting 100,000 a week, you got the foundation. You got the foundation. Here's what I tell people. You know, it should take you probably 10 managers. And, and the way you write business, it should probably take you like 30 sub eights. You probably got that now. You got to think about that. You probably got it right now. 10 managers, 30 submitting agents. So why aren't you currently doing it right now? Why aren't you doing it? Okay. But in your, because here's what's got to happen. All of your individual deals got to want 10 managers and 30 submitting agents. So if you're an essay, you got to think, how can I get to 10 managers? There's 30 agents because the only difference between an essay and an RGA, okay, is the R and the G. You take the S away. That's the only difference in the people. So I didn't care if I was an essay. I just wanted to get the people so I can smash this person. And then once I do it, I'm going to smash you, but we're on the same team. We're going to celebrate together. I'm not going to want you to do bad because if you do bad, then I got to do more. You know what I mean? Now there's more pressure on me. So understand, Daquan, we got to get you to 10 managers. You know, how many you got now? If you got zero, I'm going to show you how to get to 10. You know what I mean? Because everything can be changed around in 90 days. 90 days. I'm building a house right now. It's going to take nine months for my house to be built. Nine months. But it can take you 90 days to build your future. 90 days if you do it the right way. Almost every single person's motivation that I see is to get out of the field. You know what I mean? Like mine, I always saw always tell people, no, it's not to get out of the field, but I was lying. Like who, like the field ain't bad, don't get me wrong, but, but who wants to be in the field for 20 years, 10 years, five years, probably not a lot of people that I meet, that I, that I deal with, you know what I mean? So that should be a lot of your motivation. So think about this, in 90 days, if we need to add 30 people, if we need to add 30 people in 90 days, right? Typically in 90 days, we probably lose, I would say probably minimal about five people a month. So if we started this thing right now in August, that means I would might be lose about five people a month. So if I lose five people a month because I'm training all these people, then that means I'm probably going to lose how many? 15, right? So that means I probably need to add 45 people. So how do I, lose, how do I add 45 people? If I add 45 people, then I always lowball it. And I say, usually probably Tommy is probably coding one out of three people. But let's lowball it and let's say we're coding one out of four. So if I look at, let's say my 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 net number needs to be 45. If I do 45 and divide that by 0.25, that means I probably need to code 180 people. I'm sorry, hire 180 people, I'm sorry. So if I hire 180 people, I'll be able to code 45. If I code 45, then guess what? I'm probably gonna be stuck with the 30. Does that make sense to everybody? So some people, you might think of this, okay, if I'm an RJ, let me think about this. If I'm an MJ, let me think about this. But guess what? If you're an MGA, you can say, you know what? Maybe not add 30, but add 15. But I'm going to show you how if you want to get it to 100, you got to add, you got you to hire 180 people. And then you're going to code a fourth of them. Now, here's what will help you with this. Personal recruits, which you guys are grading. Personal recruits are probably like 50%. But I look at a personal recruit as just icing on the cake. Like you make the cake, then you put the icing on the cake. Like if you don't, if you make the cake no icing, the cake's still probably decent. But for me, I like sweets. I like the icing. So that, that's what a personal recruit is. You know, you'll be able to get these personal recruits for sure. But I need to code 180 people. So now I need to think about it. if I need to code, if I need to hire 180, then how many now do I need to put into my 
webinars. You know, I'm sure you guys do your webinars. And now when you look at the webinars, you know, how many people are we hiring on average? Can anybody tell me this, you know, um, in the webinars? Like if I put a hundred people in a webinar, how many people would I probably hire? Well, what, what's the number out of, out of your agency? Anybody know? What? Well, I... Hold on. Here, how about now? Oh, yep, I hear you. It is uh, typically half. Half, okay. So if I hire half the people that are in my webinar, that means I got to put 360 people in the webinars. And then you got to look at your show ratio for the webinars. So now if my show ratio, let's say I book 100, I might put 30 people in my webinar. You know, let's say, let's say it's about a 30, would you say about 30% show ratio or 20 to 25? What would you say it is, you know, for, um, for, for show? About 30? So now if I look at it being 30%, that means guess what? I got to book 1,200 interviews. And if I look at 1,200 interviews over a 90 day period, 400, 400 interviews a week. I mean, a month. I'm sorry, 400 a month for 90 days. And I feel like that's doable, but this is what gives you purpose. Everybody always tells me, well, how can I get purpose? How can you, how do you stay motivated? I stay motivated because I know what I need to do. Like every single day, like our essays, our GAs, guys, what we got to do is you got to get schedules. Like I see so many people just, just, just walking around and you got no schedule, no schedule for years. I had no schedule. With my income, it would come in and guess what happened? It would go out because I had nothing that I wanted to do with it. So your time, your time will come, your time will go. But if you don't have a detailed schedule, you think it's okay because you're the man, Todd, you can handle anything. You're, you, you're a great talker. You're the man, but, you're, but your agent isn't. Your essay isn't. And you got to help them with a schedule. Just like you got to have a schedule for if you need 400 interviews booked for this week, when are you going to book them? Where are they going to come from? Are they going to come from talent acquisition firms? Are they going to come a couple from you, a couple from your leaders, a couple from your managers? And then once you understand where that's coming from, you got the whole game plan. You got to attack it. But now you got the why. Now you got the why you're waking up in the morning calling RMS. Now you got the why if you're using a talent acquisition firm, I'm paying 300 bucks a week. You got the why put into it. You know, you wouldn't just start getting in your car and just start driving, not knowing where you're going to go. You got no why. Like you got to be able to have that why behind it. And the why is 400 interviews a month. That's 100 a week. And you're there and you're there, but you got to be able to do the work. And then once you start doing that, then what you want to do is you want to create the winning culture with your team. How you create the winning culture with the team is something we've been doing since we were, since we came up in the business, you pick somebody in the deal that's doing better than you. And they don't know that you're competing with them. And you just start competing, you know, case you're probably one of the RGAs. You'll be like, Hey, look, my RGA deal is doing right now, $25,000 a week. Here's an RGA deal doing 40,000 a week. They're our first competition. We got to start beating them in a whole month. Boom. Then we cross them out. Then we go to the next person, cross them out. But if, if, if the, if the score of the game did not matter, why would they take score? You got to take score. Vince Lombardi said that. Why is there a score? So you always like that, like this agencies are competitive agencies. And when we don't compete, we don't win. Simple as that.
we used to always say, me and T, like, we got to get back to competing. We got to get back to competing because that's when everybody's at their best. And that's when you start crossing out people. And then you also make sure that you're personal recruiting. And then I think the last thing that you do is, you know, I, I, I'm sure TV is cool with this. You know what I mean? But sometimes you got to get creative, you know, and I'm sure some of you, you know, he was creative with and you got a contract based upon certain things. Like maybe you recruited in five to seven people and you got a contract. Like that's how you create that winning culture doing $100,000 a week. Because what I believe in is influence, okay? Leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. If you can influence four people to work here, why wouldn't I give you an essay contract? We'll teach everything else, right, TV? I'm sure you agree with that. You know, if you can recruit in 10 people, why not give you a GA contract? This is how you grow. This is how you build, but you got to believe in it. You got to believe 100%, you know, because I'm sure everybody wants a good life in here. But this stuff, I can tell that I'm not afraid now to tell anybody secrets. Tommy isn't either, because I can give everybody the same info on this screen, but it's on you to execute and implement. Just like it's on the agent to memorize and then utilize. Like you gotta, you gotta execute this stuff. You gotta implement this stuff. And you can do the same thing. You can think, well, Justin, my, my deal, I'm not looking to do hundred a week, but you might in the equation of the Vena agency, you might be in charge of 25,000 a week. So all the numbers I just showed you, do 25% of. Like if all the times, whatever you're thinking about and, and somebody comes up with something and then your mind thinks of a problem, you're not a leader. When someone tells you something, your mind got to think of a solution, not a problem. It can think of a question, don't get me wrong, but when you think of that question, you should have a solution for it, not always Tommy. If Tommy has all the solutions, or Casey, or Gio, or Josh, or Drew, guess what? The agency is not going to run the way it needs to run. So you might hear something and, and, and have a question, but try to come up with your own solution too. And then ask somebody, hey, was this the right solution? You know, don't just say, oh, well, that's never gonna work because of this. No, that's putting a problem with something that could work, but you gotta be able to implement and execute. You gotta implement things with a high level of belief, not a high level of doubt and fear with a high level of belief that it can happen, not doubt and fear. Think about the baseball player that goes 0 for 3. You know, that baseball player, 0 for 3. Man, they get back up ninth, ninth inning. You think they go up to that plate with, oh, the last batter just got hit? Oh, man, this person didn't get a hit. It's two outs. No, they need to go up there with a high level of belief that they can hit a home run and end the game. Because if not, it's never gonna happen. You gotta believe that you can still add value to people. Ask yourself, how well would you grade yourself when implementing, when executing everything that Tommy Bean has told you to do? How well have you implemented and executed everything to a T? How good? How good are you at looking at your vision, your vision, what you see yourself doing, your goals, what you want to do, and then your action steps of how you're going to do it? How well are you looking at this every single day? Not every other day, every day, and knowing and believing that you can get the job done. How well are you at looking at that stuff? Because imagine... If you didn't brush your teeth for two days, Casey, what would happen? No one want to talk to you. If you brush it on Monday, not on Tuesday, nobody want to talk to you. But we look at our goals on Monday, but we don't look at it on Tuesday. And we forget about it and the world starts to control us. We have a bad day. We have a bad week. Interviews. We only booked 200 instead of 400. Why didn't we reevaluate the game plan? If the Steelers lose a game, they're not just going to say, oh, we can't win a Super Bowl anymore. They reevaluate the year. 
if they lose a player like Ben Roethlisberger, they didn't just say, oh, we can't do it. They were still battling at the end of the year to go to the playoffs. Like, so you got to be make sure you're looking at this stuff and reevaluate it and see where you're going and see where you're at and see how far away you are. So I can keep going for days, but I know you might have some questions. If you don't, I can keep rolling, you know, but is there any main questions that, that you guys might have for me that, you know, you're struggling with this, uh, your people are this way, uh, the virtual, you know, which, which we're loving the virtual. Um, is there any, any, any questions um, that you guys have, you know, before, before we go into the other one at 10, 1030, I want to open up for some questions. I have a question for you, Jay. Yep. This is more so like on a production side, you know, with, um, you know, obviously trying to um, get your people to, to grow faster. Um, would you say that you're, you're already a deal? Are you guys, um, you know, 100% virtual? Or are you guys still mixing in a little bit of, um, you know, in-person sits and things like that? Because, um, you know, me personally, coming all the way from PA to Illinois, you know what I mean, figure out, like, obviously, you know, I, I know um, the control is better. Obviously, you know, I feel like everybody would feel better and more comfortable in person. But obviously, you know, making this transition to virtual, um, got to yeah. get more comfortable with that, you know what I mean? Because this is where the company's, go company is going. Um, how do you, what do I want to say? It, number one, is your is your team like 100%, you know, virtual, you know, not seeing anybody at all in face-to-face? -face. And number two, um, what are some things that you f you find like your team does really well as far as like, you know, um, getting better control of the phone or what are you guys doing, you know what I mean, to, to achieve that type of success? Yeah, good question. Uh First question, first answer is I, I would say 99% are virtual. Uh, we probably have five people that go out and see people still. Uh, two are in Florida and uh, three are in Memphis, uh, but that's it. That Everybody else, 100% virtual. Um, and it, it was a struggle at first, but now the people like the virtual more than they do, you know, going out and seeing people. Um, and, and I think what happened was they understood that this wasn't going away. Like I told them, this is not going away. So you either figure it out or you're going to get left behind. And the people that are, that are, that are competitive didn't want to get left behind. So they, they figured it out and, and they start writing 15,000 in a month, 20,000 in a month. Um, and the people that were doing good at it, I may teach the other people it. Uh, but I watched a presentation the other day because I've never done a virtual at all in my life. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I watched someone do a presentation yesterday. He sold them. And for me, I've been here 12 years. I knew when the person answered the Zoom call, they were going to buy just from their voice. You know, and that's, and that's something that I can't teach you. That's something that's just, you know, you, you, you learn, you know being here for 12 years i could just tell the, the lady how she was answering the questions that she was going to buy uh but the rapport was very awkward i'm not gonna lie to you it was very awkward um i feel he took too long with the rapport i feel with the rapport you got to switch it up you got to understand that it's a shotgun to, to you finishing 30 minutes max you know what i mean so i told a guy today on my development if you're spending longer than 30 minutes to the end, I want you to record yourself by yourself and watch it by yourself first. And I guarantee you there's things that you're saying, you're repeating yourself because in a home we can do that, but over virtual we can't. And what we find is we're repeating ourselves. Even with final interviews that I do, I found myself repeating myself. So I'm like, why did I repeat myself? Because I felt it didn't come out the smooth the first time. But here's the thing, if it doesn't come out smooth the first time, you ask the client, does that make sense? And if they say yes, then they got it. Don't worry about it. So I would say, try not to in your presentation, repeat yourself, you know, over and over again, you know, just say it very basic and understand they'll get it if you say it very basic. And whenever you're tying down, like we are having show, show ratio problems, you know, just like everybody else. Um, you know, but what people are doing for the show ratio problems is, is they, in the morning, uh, they're sending them the zoom link. They're sending it that day of, but also in the morning. And then 10 minutes before the zoom call, 
They're calling the person. Making sure they're still good with it. And again, if you got, if you were out there where we went and saw people, that's totally against everything we do. So again, it's almost like we're switching things around. You know what I mean? And it's going to be uncomfortable for a little bit of time, but then it's going to get very more, um, very more comfortable because you're doing it over and over again. Like we had people do $44,000 in production last month, 50,000 in production last month, all virtual. So I will look at it as if they can do it. Why can't, why can't I do it? You know, and it takes, you know, you just got to slow it down and then call them 10 minutes before. Then whenever you're doing the actual presentation, you're making sure you're not repeating yourself. Spend probably five minutes in the report. You know, we probably ask them, hey, are you currently working right now? Um, you, you, you're not, okay. Uh, you're probably making more money sitting at home than you were working with the unemployment. I apologize, the 600 is gone, you know, but you're getting unemployment, right? Okay, great. Oh, you are working? What were you doing? So you almost build a little bit of rapport based on what they're doing for work. What about your wife? she working hey did the coronavirus and the quarantine did any one of your family you know unfortunately pass away from it did anybody you know got it okay great let's go ahead and start and get into the presentation you know i've had to cut out the benefits in my webinar i cut out 15 minutes it's 30 minutes boom it's done and i'm hiring more people now than i did before and i'm not even going over the two job so that's just an example of some things you can cut out because you don't need. Um, one thing also that we're using at, at the close for uh, for people, you know, I'm telling them that, you know, these benefits were checked and checked. Um, and we have a 50 man labor advisory board that they look over all these benefits to make sure that you're getting the best deal. We got people on this board like Jim Wright. Uh, he was the former speaker of the house. You know, he's on that board. Uh, we got Dick Gephardt. He ran for presidency a couple of years ago. I don't remember. I don't know if you remember. He's on that board. Are you a football fan? You like the Bears? You like wh whoever else is there in Chicago? Uh, D. Maurice Smith, the NFL Players Association president, is on our board. He's in a union. Jimmy Hoffa Jr. He's on our board. And the biggest concern, Daquan, that they that they that they had was two things. Number one. People were living too long. They were living too long, you know? So now, guess what? These benefits, they were living too long. They were costing too much money for them. My grandpa's 90 about to pass away, I would tell him. And the other concern was people were dying too soon. Heart attacks. They were dying of strokes cancer so that's why they set up this freedom of choice so the family didn't have to worry about it just in case you lived too long or you died too soon you were okay so that's one thing that we're using in the clothes is healthy uh does somebody have a question about schedules good schedule for sa or ga to get production yeah um, I was just, yeah yeah, I, yeah so I, I just created um a sample training schedule and I'll go over week one and week two for you guys. And Tommy, I'll get this to you if you want. All right, but we we got everybody ready to hop well, on for um, the other one. What now. we've been finding out. Okay, cool. I'll just yeah. I'll just get that to you then. Um, All right, we got eleven people waiting. I'm going to add them in now, guys. Let's do it. Is it echoing when I talk? Your presentation's thirty, like about thirty minutes. Can you maybe like? Go over what you guys cut out. Like you, you skip things for certain people. Yep. Because, because I mean, I'll be honest. My presentation is like an hour to an hour and a half. So. POS or POS or like uh, POS? Um, no, no. I mean, we were running Will Kids Child Safe, and then we just started getting POS. So okay. I mean, they are a little bit shorter. You got muted, Josh. You got muted. Oh, there we go. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Hey, muted. Justin. Hey, 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 my man. I've seen How you we for doing? a long time. How you been? I, I've been good. Been great. You, you had a great good? month last month, I heard. 
We did okay. We did okay. The team did. The team. The team did good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, Could you're the man, buddy. Better, but they did good. <laughs> Proud of them. Yeah. How's the kids? Getting too big. Too big. Uh, seven five and about to be two. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you. Running me like crazy. Running me like crazy. You too. You too, Mr. Vino. All right. Tell your dad I said hi. Oops. Let's see here. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and uh, if you can hear me, let's see here. I got two, two computers going. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, Jay's been going all morning right now, so... Uh, we appreciate you hopping on, uh, Justin, to speak to our, our managers, and now he's going to be speaking to the agency and everyone else. Um, looks like we got everybody pretty much on the call, so we'll go ahead and get started. If you don't know Justin, Justin's been with the company now for 12 years. Um, his renewals are, are $17,000 a month. Uh, he was the top MGA in the company. Uh, uh, the fastest in our agency, the first person in our agency to be an MGA on stage in various agencies after three years and his, in his, basically in his third year with the company, he was the, the number five MGA in the world. Uh, he was on stage in Putacana. And then um, uh, the very next year, he was the number three MGA on stage. Uh, and since then, he's grown his, his, his team to be a top RGA in the company. He is a president in various agencies where uh, where, I, where obviously most of us came from. Uh, a lot of the managers here already know Justin. Um, Justin's just a, a beast in business, uh, a work, super, super crazy work ethic. First guy at the office, last guy to leave, uh, a numbers guy. He knows the numbers inside and out. And um, when it comes to business, man, he, he's, he's crushing it right now. Uh, he had number one RGA in the whole entire company last month of June. And then July, he had a bigger month in July than he had in June. So we'll see him back in the spotlight for, from now until the end of the year. Um, but that's enough about business. On a personal side, uh, Justin, he's, he's married. He has three uh, beautiful girls. And um, uh, I, I, I mean, I've been the pleasure of being able to work side by side with him for the last, you know, 12 years. I, literally, his office was right, right through the wall. Like, if I needed Justin, I would go, Hey, Justin, and I would just yell through the wall, <laughs> and I'd, I'd knock on the wall, and he would knock right back. We were talking about cutting a hole out in the wall just so we could just talk to each other right through the wall. That's, that's, been, that's pretty much been my, my, my partner in crime. We competed. Uh, iron sharpens iron. We have a, a daily locker room where we were at with, with Eric Giglione, and, and the title of our locker room together was Iron Sharpens Iron because I would try and get better, and he would try and get better, and then he'd have a big month and I'd have to have a big month and he would come in with a nice tie. So I had to come in with a better tie and he ties not a different way. So I had to tie my knot a different way. And he'd have David Yerman bracelets. So I had to get five. He then he had to, had to get six David Yerman bracelets. And it was just a competition nonstop. But uh, he's one of my, my best friends, man. He's been in my wedding. I've been in his wedding. Um, they're coming up to spend a weekend at the end of the month. Justin's going to be here on, on that Friday. Like I've been telling you guys, uh, so we're excited to have him. Excited to have you here today, Jay. So um, I could go on and on, as you guys know, but I'm going to pass it over to Justin, and uh, let's welcome Justin to the call this morning, guys. Awesome, awesome privilege, man. Thank you. I'm going to buy you some uh, some some dinner, some lunch when I get up there uh, with, all the, with all the kids, man. You know, we were like salt and pepper. Uh, you know, whenever, whenever you were here, man, I, I definitely do miss my brother, man, in crime. It's not the same, uh, you know, being, being uh, without you guys, uh, especially without you, T. We spent so much time together, 12 years, um, you know, at, at the hip, man. And, uh, but I know you're, you're going to do phenomenal things up there. You guys already hit $100,000 a week um, in production. Now the fastest agency ever to do it. So hats off to you guys. And I know Simon and Maddie are going to be up there pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to be up there to see you guys and gals, and I can't, I cannot wait. Um, you know, so a couple of things that, I mean, I was talking to the leaders earlier today. Um, you know, we were talking about um, a lot of leadership stuff, how to get the deal to 100,000. But now that we got the whole agency on, you know, I want, I want to focus more so on uh, some presentation stuff, uh, focus on some mindset stuff as well. 
uh, because I feel like the mind is, 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 is what gets some people in trouble uh, with the way we think. Uh, with the way we think about, you know, bad things that happen, but also the way we think about some good things. Uh, because I develop a lot of people during the week. Um, I develop myself a lot during the week so I can always have something to give to people. And if my mind is in a bad place, then I'll never be able to get anything good out of it. So, you know, the first thing I think Josh was asking me as we, as we hung up is, you know, the presentation. Um, I think now, you know, my, my whole RJ deal is probably 98 to 99 percent virtual and at the time they didn't want to go virtual like i fought a bunch of people about it i was getting on zoom calls uh and 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 one week happened and, and it just clicked um i thought we would be out of the quarantine in in, in in a month and we'd be okay i was i was i was not thinking straight now being in the quarantine for what 120 160 i lost count uh you know and now all our business coming virtual i can't get these people out of virtual you know, they said whenever we're able to go see people, I don't even want to do it, you know, because they're having so much time, so much fun actually doing the virtual. So, you know, their presentations, um, the longest one I've seen is 45 minutes. Uh, the shortest one I've seen has been 30 minutes. And, you know, with POS, if you're running POS, that should be only 30 minutes. The one I saw was 45, but he was talking a little bit too much. Uh, the rapport, I feel like, should only be probably about five minutes. You cannot try to, you know, make a friend over Zoom. It's not going to happen. We always used to say, make a friend, make a sale. Um, it's not going to happen. You might find something that you're in common with, but the more you find that you're in common with them, the longer your Zoom presentation is going to be. And understand, it's a time schedule. You know, the one thing I don't want to get is I want to think about it. You know, and I don't want to get, okay, I got something to do because we've been on the Zoom for two hours. I want you on and off within 30 minutes, 45 max with the paperwork. But if it's a no sale, it probably, should probably be 30 minutes. So we're four for five if I'm running a POS, probably going over the PSR form if I'm running a POS, just beneficiaries, all that information. Uh, I'm probably going over next whole life in turn, however you explain that, you know, and then I'm going into my pitch. I should be at my pitch probably within a POS within 20 minutes, you know? And then from that pitch, if I'm willing and dealing with them or whatnot, it should only take me about 10 minutes. But I think what happens is we try to tell them so much information over the, over the Zoom. And what I've always learned is that the more that I talk, the less sales I'm going to get. But most people, when you're new, you think the more information you give them, the more sales you're going to get. It's the opposite. You know, I got some people, and Casey probably does as well, we sold policies too, they probably have no idea what they have. But they know when they're gonna die, they're gonna pay out. You know, we see POS all the time, right, Josh? And you say, well, what do you got? I don't know. Well, tell me, come on, guess. I have no idea. So you think by spending 15 more minutes by telling them this stuff, is going to cement the deal, but it's really not. They're going to forget anyways. So you want to get the basic things across. So you want to be able to get the basic things across. You know, what are some of the basic things? The basic things can be the freedom of choice, going to pay out within three to five days. The basic things can be the, the funeral inflation chart. Right now, you're 25. You're probably going to die when you're 80. That's how much your funeral is going to cost. Does that make sense? That's inflation. Basic stuff. You know, the basic things. Talking to the wife, not the husband. Okay? So, Sue, that's your name. Okay, Sue, whenever your, your, your husband dies, Joe, he's right here on the screen, you're going to get, okay, $2,500 a month tax-free. No taxes taken out for three years, 36 months. How does that make you feel, Sue? Great, makes you feel good. You'll be able to pay the bills, right? All this stuff, okay, awesome. Now, mortgage, we lose we lose Joe over here and he dies, your mortgage, Sue, is gonna be paid off free and clear. Does that make sense? Only thing you gotta pay is taxes. Does that make sense? You see how simple it is. So you wanna make things very simple whenever they're going over it, so th then the less they have to think about.
because now if they want to think about it over Zoom, guess what? They could just hang up on you. Before they could kick, they got to kick us out the house before, right? But now they could just hit, boop, hang up. So I will, I don't want to get. I want to think about it. The only thing I want to get is I can't afford it by asking them for bigger checks, by asking them for two hundred. One line that people are using now that that's crazy to me. I love when I hear it. The national recommendation. Have you guys used that at all? You know, people are saying the national recommendation. Okay, is like like whatever your A is A A option, two hundred thousand, two hundred bucks a month. But the national recommendation is option B. You know, and it's for this month. And and people are saying that word national recommendation in with that line is is getting people to buy, which is crazy to me. But sometimes it's not what you say, but how you say it. It's how you say it. We've been saying that line forever. So understand that. But you got to be, you got to find ways to simplify what you're saying in that two job. Simplify how you're giving your ABCs. Simplify. You know, if they ask you a question and you can give them a one word answer. And again, this is different because before we would, they would ask a question, I would ask them a question back. But if they ask me a question now that's very simple, like if I'm on a term conversion and the person asked the other day, they said, you know, is, so we said it's 80 bucks a month. They were already paying 29. The person asked, so is that on top of the 29 or is that replacing the 29? Most people will overcomplicate the answer. You know what I mean? I would just say, no. You know what I mean? And then they would have to ask me, well, what's going to be my what, what's going to be my final price? Then I'll let them know what the final price is going to be. But most people will spend three minutes saying, no, so this one's going to drop off and you're not going to be paying this for this and that for that. No. Easy word is no. You know what I mean? They ask you, was that going to be the price? Easy word. So you can simplify so much stuff. And what you got to do is because everybody's not me. Everybody's not Drew. Everybody's not Nolan. You got to be able to say this in your own words. You know, how you can simplify your own words. With the unions, with the associations, with the will kits, okay? It shouldn't take you 20 minutes to go through a will kit if you got a will kit. With the AD&Ds, you know, if you're going through associations or anything like that, how you can simplify this is they have PowerPoint set up. You know, and on the PowerPoint, they show them what a sample AD and D looks like. They go over it really quick. You know, then they show them what a child safety kit looks like. It's not even on the PowerPoint. They just wave it and show them what a child safety kit looks like. Let them know they're going to mail it out for them. Let them know the key points to the child safety kit. I don't even know if they're explaining the whole kit anymore. They're just waving it, showing it to them because it's wasting time. You know, how many people when we do an NO presentation? You know, uh, Josh, you can, you can nod your head or whatnot, you know, was honestly listening to us whenever we showed them, you know, what to do in the child safety kit. Like, how many people actually was like, yeah, I'm going to do that tonight? They're not. So by you spending all that time on it, you're wasting your time right there, a little bit of time. You know, but the family info guide, if you use that, you better take your time with that one. Okay. Okay. Love you. Um, you know what I mean? Like you gotta be, you gotta be able to show them that you gotta be able to take your time on that. Whatever section you feel like you need to take a lot of time on like that estate information, boom, take five minutes on that. Thing. Ask questions on that. So you pick and choose what you want to spend a lot of time on. The needs analysis doesn't take that much time. I don't think they're doing the list of concerns anymore. They're tying that into the two job. They're not doing that anymore. Just because it takes that takes probably five minutes. So you do. So, you know, the first one was lack of member only control benefits. They're saying that at the end. You know, the second one was loss of income or something like that. They're saying that income protection. You know, loss of pension. They're saying that probably somewhere at the end. You know, so all the all the concerns they're tying that into the actual two job whenever they can, so it doesn't take too much time away. Now, are you pulling the two job up on the screen? Or are you like holding up a paper? Like how, how they present it and then? Yeah. Uh, some people are doing things a little bit different. Uh, some 
people are actually drawing it, you know what I mean? Because they got a laptop where they can draw on their laptop. Uh, for me, I had the I had the edible ones that I gave them, but people forget things that you give them and they forget them in their emails and stuff like that. But we had edible ones that you can literally go in and edit. And the two job only takes about what? A minute to, to create now, maybe two minutes most. So I like the edited ones just so you can, I mean, if you don't have the edited ones, I can get you guys those, but I like the edited ones because now they can actually see it. You know what I mean? It, 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 look, it makes sense. You know, if you're doing a two job, uh, but some people are just A, B, and C in them after they, after they go over, you know, over a certain and not even doing the two job or whatnot. But if you're doing a two job, I would say, put it up on the screen, you know what I mean? And edit it. It doesn't take that much time to edit it. Uh, and if you do it in the PowerPoint, um, it actually shows up. You can click it. You know what I mean? As as it's going, as it's going, just like in the web, just like in the webinars. But I think visuals are always, you know what I mean, key. Visuals are key. But it involves confidence. You know, like like the biggest thing is confidence. You got to understand that in this business, it's one out of three. One out of three. You know. Geo might go 10 out of 10, 25 out of 25, but until you get his skill set and his mindset, you're not going to do that. So you got to be stuck on one out of three. And people go to the Hall of Fame one out of three. Like I'm in my high school Hall of Fame in baseball and football, but baseball, I would only bat it probably 33, three out of three. But we won a state championship, was a runner-up on one. I stole a lot of bases, caught a lot of balls, one out of three. But you got to you gotta execute and implement and utilize the same when you do that first presentation that when you do that 10th presentation. You have to. You have to execute with faith, with belief, because every day is not going to be your day. But you got to attack every day like it is going to be your day. And understand the only reason why people are ahead of you is because they just got more tenure. The only reason why when I started playing football, somebody was ahead of me is because they got there before me. You know, you can do amazing things when you get there before people, but then people can catch up to you when you stop working on it. You know, at American Income, it's open trials all the time. Someone can take my job if they want to. That's why I work, you know? Like, like that is American income. Like there's always somebody somewhere working to take your job. You know what I mean? I like everybody. Don't get me wrong. We're great. We're good. But there's somebody coming to try to take my job. Like Shannon Sharp said, he didn't go see the president. Why? Because someone was trying to take his job in high school and in college. You know what I mean? I'm not going. I, that, that's missing a day of work. So understand you got to keep working. It's one out of three. And right now, we're seeing only 10 people a week on average. So 10 people a week, guess what? That's three out of 10. If your average enrollment's 1,000 AOP, you're going to be making 1,500 a week. That's 75,000 a year. People out here ain't got jobs. They're on unemployment. And that's without residuals and renewals. We got people in our agencies, they all probably do as well, that are getting release checks of $1,500 just from doing the job the right way. Like this is opportunity unlimited. My dad worked for 33 years of his life and gets $2,200 a month in his pension. $2,200 a month is what, 26,000 a year. Almost in one month, I get that in my residual income. And I don't feel like I'm better than anybody else. Last week, like this is how dumb and crazy and stupid and cool this company is at the same time. Last week, the company ACH $100,000 into my bank account in one week. I'm not an SGA. I'm an RGA, been here for 12 years, $100,000. How would that change your life? Think about that. But you can't get stuck right where you are right now. You can't get stuck. I'm, I'm two months in, you know what I mean? And I just went over three. I'm six months in and oh, I'm not making six figures yet. Can't, can't happen. You're going to blink and be here for a year. You just have to last. You just have to put the work in. And 100000 will come to you in a week. I've never made that before. 
Then they topped it up the next week with 25,000. So 125,000. That's what my dad would make in six years. And he's probably worked harder than I did. That's the opportunity. That's how blessed we are. Oh, and by the way, I didn't even leave my house. Didn't even leave my house. We're in a quarantine. We're in a pandemic. People are dying. And that's what this company did. They stepped up to the table. You're in the right place at the right time. Right place at the right time. But one of the hottest leaders that we got in this company, he's in the Hall of Fame, Mount Rushmore, Tommy Venus. I was chasing him. He always kicked my butt. You know what I mean? He's like that big brother that always kicked my ass. You know? But we're still brothers. So you got to understand what you got but you also got to put in the work yourself. It's like God in the Bible. If you don't play your part, he's not going to play his part. So if you don't play your part, this company is not going to play their part. So you got to play your part. Everybody was so excited when you signed that contract, you got to keep that excitement. Emulate the patterns of successful people. Like, think about it. When we first started, we were seeking out the Jim Seracens. We were seeking out the people that were doing great, the Marcus Smiths, the Eric Giglions, and we just wanted to be like them, wear the same clothes as them, hang out with the same people, because patterns of success emulate each other. Emulate. So we try to save you time a lot of time in this business. So you can take the shortest route possible. The shortest route possible is every day you wake up, and you make sure you develop, develop yourself for at least an hour, I feel like. Develop your mind. Then get a workout in. Develop your spirit if you're a believer because that will help you in this business. It will help you in this business. We serve people. You got to be able to fight through your struggles. Whatever you're fighting through right now is there for a reason. I've had tons of struggles in my life. Bad retention. Family members dying. Income going from, from, from it cut in half. Losing offices, losing people, but you got to be able to fight through it. We all got tough times, but it's tough compared to who? If you if you blank last week, that's tough, but compared to who? Compared to the mother that just had a miscarriage? No, that's tough. Compared to the person that just got evicted from their home and got a, and got a job? That's tough. So understand, what is it compared to? There's always somebody worse and somebody that will love to be in your shoes. Understand that. You got to get back to work. You got to learn the closing mentalities in this business. You got to learn Hugh Bell's five things for enthusiasm. You got to be a student. Like you didn't get paid to study before, but now you get paid to study. You didn't get paid to copycat people. Now you get paid to copycat. Copycat. Say the same things. I got some people in my organization afraid to make a mistake because they're like, I want to do it exactly how you do it. I'm like, no, you're going to make mistakes. Come back to me and tell me what you did. And I'll tell you if you did it wrong or not because you'll never do it the way I'm going to do it. So you got to be able to know these things. Expose yourself to enthusiasts. You know, understand a couple of closing techniques because I define winning as when, like, like I define Fun is winning. You know what I mean? Like, like when you win, it's fun. But when I'm talking to people in a presentation, you know what I mean? I define win a little bit different. If I'm talking to a client, I define win as what's important right now. And I don't like to close. Tommy's been on the field with me. I, I hate to close, but I can. It's like, I don't want to fight, but I can fight if I need to. I don't want to have to cuss you out, but I can cuss you out if I need to. You know, like, I don't want to do these things, but I will if, if you provoke me to it, you know. I mean, but I, because I'm not perfect. Nobody was except God. But before I'm going to close this person and I'm sitting down with them, I'm like, Todd, you know, like, like when you look at all this, all this coverage, man, the, the only thing me personally, I've been talking to you for 30 minutes, man. You're an awesome guy. And I always want you to win. You know what I mean? And what I see when as is when for me stands for what's important now. So let me ask you a question, Todd. What is the most important thing to you right now? You know what I mean? And most of the time I'll say my family. You know, I'll, I'll say exactly my family is as well. You know, and when do you think is the most important time to protect your family? 
I mean, I know what you're saying, Justin. You know, it, it's it's now, right? Exactly, it's now. You know, but let me ask you a third question. Could you put a price tag on your family? No, I couldn't put one on mine either. It, it'll be where it'll be huge. I wouldn't be able to afford it. And you got to understand, you can't put a price tag on your family, but there's a price to protect your family. And right now, it doesn't make any sense because you're paying more for your cable than you are to protect your family. Does that make sense, Todd? He said, yeah, that makes sense. Because let me ask you one more question, I, and I promise you, and then I say this is the last question I'm going to ask you. I say, if you were in a movie theater, and this happened before, I tell him. It happened in, uh, in in Colorado, Boulder, I think. You know, a guy came in the movie theater and started shooting. And imagine if you were in there. And sitting next to you on your right was the CEO of Time Warner Cable. I don't know what cable station y'all got out there, direct TV, whatever it is. And sitting to the left of you was the CEO of AT&T, you know, your telephone company. That guy comes in shooting it, shooting. Your family's in there too. Who are you pulling out of there first trying to get out first? Who are you? Who would you? And let them answer you. They say, well, my family. Well, guess what? That's not what you're currently doing right now. You're currently right now taking out the CEO of AT&T. You're taking out the CEO of, of Time Warner Cable before you're taking out your family because you're not protecting them. Does that make sense? So, Todd, would you like me to make this coverage more because we need to make sure that you're covering all of it or would you want to go with the national recommendation that everybody's doing that's right here which one would you want to do and if you say something like that and rehearse it you can't tell me you can't close three out of ten people like that can't tell me you can't tell me three out of ten people don't want the dollar a day program no no two out of ten people don't want the two dollar a day program when go when go drive by Chick Fil A anywhere, the line's out the door all day long. Go drive to McDonald's, the line out the door all day long. And what are they getting? Five dollar uh, 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 Happy Meals. So I guarantee you, they're not just going there this week. You know what I mean? They're going there next week. They're going there the week after. McDonald's put something in their food that the kids love, man. I hate when my kids eat McDonald's, but they love it. So whatever they put in there, like we got to find some drug to make people just grind. You know what I mean? Because McDonald's got it down. Whatever they did. But I hate, I will never eat McDonald's. So I'm going to end with some quotes, guys, because I know I only got one more minute. Because you got to understand this and you got to be able to work hard. The first quote is from Jerry Rice. You know, love this quote. Today, I will do what others won't, so tomorrow will be better. Jay Rice. Today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow will be better. Will be better. What are you doing that the person next to you is not willing to do today? Think about that. Because you can read a book and it can change your perspective like this. Like this. There's things you can do every day to get better. Another quote from Lance Armstrong. Lance, you guys know who Lance Armstrong is. Pain is temporary, but quitting lasts forever. Pain is temporary. Like when I listen to some of his stuff, some of David Goggins stuff, I'm like, dude, you're crazy, but I get it. You know what I mean? You're crazy, but I get it. Walter Payton. Remember, this one is huge. Tomorrow is promised to no one. So don't wait. Tomorrow is promised to no one. Don't wait. And then I want to end with this because I got I got to get on another development call at 11 o'clock. Is make sure that you believe in yourself. That's one of the biggest keys. Believing in yourself. But the key word in believing in yourself is you. You. Believe in you. Self. You. So I appreciate you guys letting me talk to everybody. This is what I love to do. This is what we're supposed to do in this world. I can't wait to meet everybody. Connect with my dogs that 
that I knew, you know, from various agencies. And if anybody needs anything at all, please, please, please let me know. My brother, thank you, man. Appreciate you letting me hop on, brother. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Thanks Justin. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, bro. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, guys. Appreciate you.